Welcome to Forrester's Creative YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to make resin 3D printed earrings, like these. Things you'll need. One, a 3D printer to print your objects. Or you can purchase the shells from our Etsy page. Two, uh, acrylic paint, silicone, which we've transferred to a little bottle. Uh, some sort of flow medium. This bottle says slow dry, but it's actually a mixture of, I believe, Mod Podge and water. So you can also buy flow trawl. Um, flow, there's a flow medium, pouring medium from Liquitex that's kind of expensive. If you look around YouTube, you can find lots of different ways to make your own pouring medium. Uh, you'll need water, paint, uh, wax paper or um, you know, baking paper. Uh, some sort of surface to keep your actual surface from getting too dirty. So with this, we're gonna be putting resin, uh, epoxy resin on here. And if it gets on the table, it's on the table forever. So unless we wanna mess up the sheen, which these tables have been through a lot, but I still try to avoid getting resin on them. Set that to the side. You'll need a butane lighter. This is optional, but you'll see why it's kind of cool. Uh, your little pieces of jewelry. A skin, which I will show you how to make one of these. This is made with the paint. You can use a scissor to cut out the shapes. I actually made my jewelry uh, capture pieces to the size of one of these um, Friskars, Fiskars, cutters, uh, just for ease of use. Making everything by hand and cutting every single little piece gets old fast. So you'll want to create your jewelry to the size of something you can easily cut with rather than having to hand cut out every little thing. Um, or in this case, make it big enough that you can pour the paint directly into the container instead of having to make a skin. Um, you can't really get these kind of results in a very small container. That's why we do the skins and cut them out. You will also need a can of air, uh, jump rings, something that you can get really hot. So in this case, we're using a tile, a porcelain tile, and later on, we will heat this up to melt the jump rings into our jewelry. And of course, two-part epoxy. We're using uh, Crystal Clear by East Coast Resin. You can use any kind of epoxy. I personally don't like Easy Cast. I think it kind of, uh, it, it's very picky about mixing. If you're not exactly spot on in your measurements, it's gonna stay sticky forever. So I suggest buying the gallon thing of um, East Coast Resin or there's another brand on Amazon that you can get that are just, so much better and ounce for ounce it's a lot cheaper than easy cast or anything you're going to buy at michael's or anything like that so uh, and last but not least a pair of gloves uh resin is sticky if you get some on you it's going to be there forever and you're going to have sticky hands and it feels really gross um this will also keep you from getting paint on you and other things like that so make sure you have these all right let's get started so first, let's talk about 3D printing. 3D printing is a fantastic way of making jewelry and uh, other objects that you can sell on Etsy. So my whole goal in making jewelry is to sell jewelry on Etsy. If you are making jewelry for personal use, feel free to go to websites like Thingiverse and find uh, open source files that you can download and make your own jewelry with. If it's for you personally, most of them don't care how many you print. However, if you're going to sell, you need to make your own designs. I suggest going to tinkercad.com and learn how to do basic CAD work. This is a very simple design that you can make in Tinkercad. Uh, it's just a hexagon with a hexagon hole inside it. It's really easy. I'll do another video if there's some interest in that and just how to use Tinkercad and how I build these basic designs to these molecule size designs in Tinkercad later on. But for now, 
For copyright reasons, if you're gonna sell jewelry, make sure it's your own design or it's a design that has commercial permissions. All right, so moving on. So if you choose to go the 3D printer route, while your design is printing, you can do pretty much all of the other work and by the time your print is done, your paint should be dry, you should be ready to go. All right, the next part of this process is making the acrylic skin. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on the workspace here so you can really see what's going on with this. When it comes to pouring acrylics, you need at least three colors. In this case, we're doing red, yellow, and white. We haven't mixed these yet. To each of them, I'm going to add a squirt of pouring medium. And then add a stir stick to each. And then enough water to give it a little bit of a liquidy consistency, but not a watery consistency. So we'll pour this. And this is a part that if you want to go ahead, so yeah, that's what you want it to flow off. And this is a part, if you wanna go ahead and put on your gloves, you can do that. May have put too much liquid in here. And it's okay, this is um, pretty forgiving overall compared to if you were doing an acrylic pour on a canvas. So unlike when you're doing a canvas acrylic pour, if your paint mixture comes out a little too watery um, or kind of clumpy, it's not as big a deal as it would be on a canvas. So that's pretty good, and then let's mix up this one. Now this one is definitely not liquid enough, so let's add a little more water. And that ought to do it. Make sure you stir for long enough because if you don't get everything mixed together, it's not going to come out right. That's good. So now we're going to add the silicone. I suggest about, if you have a pipette, about eight drops per cup. Um, eight to 10, but it really depends on how much you make. This is an experimental process and uh, we can do another video on silicone and how to add that. We have a, another artist here, Deb, who is fantastic at acrylic pores and would be a much better teacher for a video on the art of acrylic pouring. So. Once you've put in the acrylic or the silicone, stir again. And make sure even when it seems smooth to keep stirring, probably, you know, starting out, try to do about two minutes per cup, maybe a little less. Okay. Um, just to make sure you really get that silicone mixed in. You want it you want it put throughout. So the method we're using is very similar to what you can find on YouTube called the dirty cup pour, but we're not actually going to be pouring it. So let's get all of that mixed up. And we're just gonna use this cup for all of it. We will pour in the red. Set that to the side, pour in the yellow, right. set that to 
the side. Now give this a stir, lift, and stir the other way and lift. If you want, you know, kind of go around that way. So most of the times we would use a pipette like the one for the silicone. You can get these really cheap on Amazon. Use the pipette to pull up the paint when you're filling in these larger items that we're not going to do a skin in. For filling in these, we want to create the skin that will look like this when it's done. So, for that purpose, we have paper. And if you have a little water, it's fine. So what we're going to do is pour this on here. Looks a little bit like ketchup and mustard, but that's okay. Now, I like to fold it. Other people prefer to spread the paint, so it's really up to you. And you want to kind of push everything outwards. Kind of get as much of a surface area as you can. That's okay. Like I said, these tables are not, they are, they are meant for this kind of stuff. So as you see, there's some cells already coming up from the silicone we put in. If you blow on it, you'll see even more coming up. But what's really gonna speed up this process is a butane torch. So we just gently go over this in various spots and you're going to get lots of cells coming up. And remember this is still paper so don't leave the torch setting on any one spot for a long time. I think that's all it's going to give us for now. And as this sets it will these cells will continue to expand and grow, which is exactly what we want. So this will dry probably over about three or four hours. I usually leave them overnight just to let everything completely set and you'll end up with a piece like this. Now, so if you were gonna make these acrylic skins for something like uh, putting onto a canvas, you would want to add a Mod Podge or Elmer's glue into the paint, into these mixtures before, um, before pouring. Because as this is now, this is very thin and I want it to be thin to fit into these, but it's not stretchy. So this will not peel off this page at all. Whereas if I had added Mod Podge, it will peel off very easily. So since we still have paint left, Let's slide this to the side and let's do another one. And this time I'll show you what it looks like when people spread using the uh, stick. down the edges if you have a fan or anything going. So once that's dry and your you know cases are printed, you can go ahead and cut out your skin. So since I use one of these, and this is the large hexagon Fiskars that you can buy on Amazon or in any 
uh, Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby, wherever it is you shop. So first we need some scissors. All right, so we'll use the scissors to cut around, cut all the paper edges off. And cut off any areas that you won't be able to fit into the pattern of your cut. Or that are just too much white space. Don't have anything interesting. So what we'll do is slide this, wherever it is you want to start, into here. And then it pops right out. And you have... little hexagon. Let's do one more in kind of the same area so we can have a matching set. Now I generally would go all the way around this and you'll sometimes get a little caught. That's okay. Um, I would go all the way around this cutting edges and then cut that off and then do that and then maybe have two left in the center and then match them up for earring pairings. You can also just do uh, necklace pendants, whatever you want with these. So as you'll see, these fit perfectly into our cases. Now this one, because I've been using this cutter for so long, the blades are a little dull. So you might have to clean up a little bit. There's a little edge sticking off there. So these fit in here. And there you go. You have two perfectly sized hexagons for your future earrings. Now, recently, and on our Etsy page, you'll see pendants about this size. Um, this was a mistake. I printed a set that were too tall. I really didn't like that. It fits badly as an earring. Um, so we'll be selling these as pendants. Maybe earrings if you're into the really bulky stuff, but um, these are discontinued. Everything is, all the casings I'm printing from now on are this size. They're lighter weight. They use a lot less resin. Um, they're just better overall. All right, so next, what I would do is use a glue stick to actually glue this in. So you'd pull this out and put glue on the back, glue it down, maybe run the back of your fingernail along to keep it pushed down. That will give you a really flat um, entry. So these are kind of hard to see. They are solid black, but they have like white, um, acrylic pour in the black. So I kind of feel like they look like universes, but there is a acrylic piece pushed down in here and it's already glued down. And that's what we're gonna use to d demonstrate the epoxy resin part of this. All right, so with epoxy resin, you have to make sure it's measured pretty precisely. So you have your hardener and for this, we're not going to use a ton. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make a little more than what's necessary for these, just because I have other jewelry I need to fill. So I use these little measuring cups when I have them available. So with this one, we'll go up to the one ounce level with each liquid, and that'll give us two ounces total. So, All right, so that's at one ounce. Um, and you can pour these together in the same cup. Uh, I don't trust these to be really precise. And if I over pour, um, then it's already mixed and then I have to use more hardener. So I, I still pour them separately. So let's do another ounce. And if you're not quite sure 
then um, I would always have a little, see that one over in it. Always have a little more hardener if you're not precise. hardener the other parts the actual resin resin will not ever harden if uh, if you don't put hardener in it all right so let's pour all the hardener into here and use a stick I'm just using popsicle sticks to kind of make sure you get as much as you can out stir it, it'll turn kind of white. You just have to keep stirring until it's clear again. And it'll be bubbly, but that's okay because you can use your butane lighter to get any of the bubbles out after you pour. Just uh, make sure you actually have butane in your butane torch because uh, I didn't yesterday. So some of these have a couple bubbles in them. I don't think most people would notice, but as the maker, you're gonna notice. So yeah, just keep stirring the resin until it's clear with bubbles in it. You don't want it to be white at all. And you can stir so slowly that you don't have a lot of bubbles, but you're gonna have to stir really, really slowly. For this size, I'll use a pipette. For this, I'll only use a pipette for the holes because these are such large areas, it would take forever to fill with a pipette. So you'll see here, we've hot glued two drink lids, soda lids down. So if we, I like to overfill these a little to where there's a dome, like you can see on here, um, it covers the edges. Uh, I did not do that on these previous earrings, the ones I'm wearing now. Um, so this is kind of a new, new design for, uh, for this. So use your pipette to pull a good amount of resin into it. And then drip it on. So any overflow that happens, because we have this, um, because we have these on top of here, we'll just drip straight down and you can use a Dremel tool to Dremel off the extra on the back. So any drip marks, you can try to save it from drip marks, but you're always gonna have drip marks. Um, I like this look because it covers up any imperfections in the printing along the edges. Um, it just looks really, really sharp. I tried to do some of these using the stick instead of a pipette yesterday and it just got everywhere. So I'm back to using a pipette for For uh, applying resin to these. A little bit more should do the dome all the way across the top. good so you can see there's bubbles in here probably I'm not sure if the camera is good enough to pick that up but just go over the top with your butane liner 
and sometimes it'll get a little <laughs> a little much but you'll have uh, some more bubbles will come up while we're doing this one so I want to show you the difference in using the stick it doesn't take as long but you also can't really accurately measure what you're doing so like that's gonna drip off the edge. Um, we don't need more than this, but getting it to these very edges is kind of a pain. So that's at the edges, but it's dripped down the sides, which it's not a big deal. It's kind of just preference, but I prefer to use the um, dropper when I can. So. Yeah, see, this is dripping off the edge all over this side now. Because it's too much. But luckily, that's why we have this like this. We can clean that up later. So, you see some more bubbles have come up on here. This one, not at the very tip. There we go. All right. So, try to wipe this edge, but it's still, yeah, it's still gonna drip down. So let's, while that's going, Go ahead and fill this one up too. You don't have to watch this. bubbles have come up. So as they come up, just touch on each one. Like this one, so much liquid has come off of it now that the edge is So if these don't come out as smooth as you want, like this little guy, I've got a little bubble there that it's, uh, it's fine. Then you can just let it cure and then do another layer of resin later. So let's slide that to the side. So, so once it cures, you're gonna end up with something like this. This is without a jump ring. To put a jump ring on, we use canned air, a tile, of course, a jump ring. In this case, I'm using ones that are kind of dark to match the black that is the plastic. So I set the jump ring on the tile. Figure out what you want the top of this to be. So in this case, I think the top is going to be this corner right here. So, use your butane lighter. 
to heat up the thing. And it'll start to turn a little red. That's when you know it's ready. There we go. All right, so get ready. Let's see, is this way? And I set it on there and press down. Turn your beer can upside down to stop it from continuing to melt. So in this case, we wanna push all this down. Oh, it's pretty dry at this point. So you end up with your new jump ring. So you can attach this to earrings, to whatever. Obviously this one is a lot more centered because I wasn't you know, trying to hurry because I'm in a video. But yeah, and so now you can add necklace chains, you can add another jump ring to center out some earrings. Um, all sorts of all sorts of things also if you want to make this a little more secure you can get another piece of PLA and just melt a flat little piece on the back or just cover this in fabric on the back it's up to you okay. all right so that's how you make these super fun acrylic poured 3d printed earrings thank you for watching hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time